Hi, Kimmy. How's it going? You're such a loyal student. I love you. Um, hi there. I'm Casey Christensen. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator living in West Kelowna, BC, where today it was pretty summer-like, actually. I was down to my my sweatpants pulled up over the knee and a and a t-shirt it was lovely and warm my husband and i've been doing a little uh landscaping this house is new to us so we've been doing a little landscaping and and um doing some improvements around the yard so we've been enjoying that so today we're going to play with the mountaineer stamp set now we did that yesterday um the yesterday's card this is the card from yesterday and yesterday's card was strictly using stamps and just a couple of trees, but mostly just stamping. But today I wanted to show you some ideas to be able to use the beautiful, beautiful, what did I do with them? Um, oh, they're in here, the Mountaineer dies, okay? They come with some beautiful dies. So I thought today, we could play with the same kind of concept, but use some of these great dies. And also, um, yesterday's card I did using some of this uh, Horizon paper, which is in, which is available now still, and it's a really good bargain. It's 50 sheets of paper in here, and each of these pieces of paper is two-sided, so. Based on what I've been doing lately, you could buy this paper, add a stamp set to it, and end up with over, I've got little bits and pieces in here, end up with over 50 to 60 cards, depending on how you use your paper. So, uh, and, the, and again, this nice paper here, it shows you on the back of the paper. This is six by six designer series paper. So it comes this way, pre-cut in six by sixes. And it has, um, it gives you all the colors on the background uh, all, all, on all of the papers. So there's Blackberry Bliss, Bumblebee, Bumblebee, Calypso Coral, Evening Evergreen, Fresh Freesia, Garden Green, Misty Moonlight, Old Olive, Pale Papaya, Polished Pink, and Soft Succulent. So that's a lot of colors incorporated in here that you can use your, your card stock and, and create all kinds of wonderful things. So today, as I said, we're going to be using, um, oh, did I put away the one I had decided on? Oh, looks like I did. Okay, let's find it again. Um, today, uh, I'm going to use a lot of the, I had a really nice one with some lake in front. There it is. I'm going to use this one, and we're going to use a lot of dyes this time. So... Let's get that out of my way. Hi, Karen. Hi, Kim. Um, let's get that out of the way. And I've got with me just a bunch of scrap bits of paper that I've had for, for a while. And one of these pieces of paper has this, uh, this um, adhesive sheet on it. Because yesterday I cut out these trees. And they're very, very detailed. And so they're a bit of a nightmare to try and glue with either the tape or with your uh, white glue. So I like to put the, the uh, adhesive sheets on the back, cut out my trees. That way when I'm ready to put them on the card, it's just peel and stick, which is really convenient. So I've got a nice piece here with still lots of room to get some trees out of it. Karen, I don't know if you saw the card, but this was yesterday's card. And uh, that's what we did using all stamps except for a few trees. And then um, today we're going to use mostly dyes. I just think it would be fun to try um, dyes on this one. So I've got this nice um, scene here. I rather like the, um, the little bit of a, well, it's, a, it's sort of a little bit of a bright sky, but I like the water here. I'm really liking this water. So I think I'm gonna build most of my uh, card above the water here. So let's get started. What we need to do first is, I am not a huge, great, big, giant fan of stamping colors on white paper because then when you go to 
die cut them out little bits of the white paper show and I'm not I'm not a giant big fan of that so I'm going to start with some mountains and what I'm going to do is I have some nice uh, this is uh, basic gray and I'm going to use no it isn't basic gray it's uh it's uh mm, there's only three grays it's the middle one sorry not not the best brain day for me but I'm persevering um, and I'm going to use the basic gray um, ink so what I want to do first here is I want to take the smooth side these stamps are all double-sided so there's the smooth sides which you're meant to use and then there's the textured size which gives you the detail or size side which gives you the detail of the mountains so I'm going to start out with a textured bit here and I just want to give myself a little um let's get my let's get my uh thing here there we go we'll put it on here and smooth side up and I just want to get my crumb cake I think so I want a little bit of a hue in the background of brownier looking so let's just ink that up a little bit You know, we could also do our mountains in misty moonlight, but let's see what this looks like. So what I want to do here first is I want to give this a hint of a mountain in behind here. Not a lot. You know, I'm going to put it like maybe right about right about there. You see where that is? I'm just going to put it right about there to give our mountains a little, almost a little bit of a shadowing. So we'll give that a little press down. And there it is. Now, there's a little bit anything that happens with these stamps like if you look here you'll see i've got a little, little white spot there i've got a little line here but the cool thing about these stamps is it's so easy to hide these things with trees and you know what have you all kinds of different things you can do so i'm just going to add another little mountain over here on this side And I did it in gray. How clever was that? Okay, wait. It might actually be better. So let's just see. Let's just see. Now, how did I have two inks open at the same time? Oh, well, one never knows with me. But here, let's start over. And actually, now that I'm looking at it, I think gray might be the better color anyways. So it's a happy accident. So let's put that one aside. And we'll just do this again. But we're going to do the gray. So. And I think I might want to stamp it off. I don't know if that's a little too dark. We'll just see. But I think I might want to do a second. Yeah, there's, there's, they're coming out with more and more of them, Karen, the reversible stamps. The moon on here is just really, really brilliant because the, the moon on my uh, card that I did yesterday, wherever that got to, yeah, that's a hazy mystery. It's okay. But the moon is done in two, so you use a lighter yellow for the for the shiny side of the moon, and then you use a darker one for the detail side of the moon. It actually looks quite realistic. Okay, so let's do this again. Check the ink. Yeah, basic gray. Basic gray. I think I'll stamp it off. Not hard, just a little, just a little bit. I'm going to pop it over here, and I think I'm actually going to have it start... A little off the page okay okay so I'm quite liking that see because of the color underneath it gives it kind of a neat little mottled kind of effect which I'm actually liking I'm actually really liking it a lot actually so I'm going to add some more here to have it just go straight across Okay, and this, that's going to get hidden, so we're not worried about that. We're not at all worried about that, because that'll get hidden for sure. Okay, now that we've done that, let's get our gray paper. Let's see, can I stamp on the other side of this? Sure I can. Sure I can. Nothing went through, so I can do that. So let's get our gray paper, and what we're going to do is maybe use our smoky slate. That's what color this paper is, is smoky slate. Let's use our smoky slate for the shiny side of our mountains. Oh, I, I make mistakes every day. I'm, I'm constantly making mistakes. But you know what? The good news is, I always tell myself, I, 
I, I never give up. I, I just never, ever, ever give up. I just keep doing it till I get it right. And if I really, really, really can't get it right, I'll sit at the sides and, and, and not worry about it today and go back to it maybe tomorrow. Okay, so let's get this. And let's put one here. Now I need to stand up to give this a good firm press. There's one. And we're going to need two mountain ranges. So let's do the other one now. We may as well. Lots of room for our dies. Okay, and you are going to get these little lines, but don't worry because when you flip it over to do the other side, those are going to get covered. Okay, so I'm thinking of, I'm just thinking of trying something. I've not had a lot of luck with this. Uh, with this white thing but you know I'm nothing if not determined so I'm going to flip this over to the side to the to the um, side with the um, detail and I'm going to try something are you ready what just try it oh how is totally how we learned it's like I always say to my students there's no such thing as a stupid question because guaranteed no matter how stupid you think your question is I've probably asked it myself so you know it's uh, ask away. <laughs> so this is the old style stamp pad. So I'm not even sure how you get it off. Let's see. Like that. Okay, I got to try this first because I'm not having a lot of luck with this particular stamp pad. I'm not really sure why. When you buy this one now, this is pigment ink. So you could actually use it for embossing. But when you buy this ink now, they don't, it doesn't come all inked up this white one it doesn't come all inked up it comes with a, a clear pad and a bottle you have to ink it up yourself and I think because when I got it I was kind of new at the time I think I've over inked it so let's just see if I get anything I'm not going to get anything oh that's too bad because I kind of wanted to do this because it looks really neat oh I'm getting something I just have to be a little rough with it Okay, so this is white pigment ink. So it's uh, it's quite a bit, and I'm just gonna do it on here to give it a try, right? Let's just drop it there. No, it doesn't show enough to even be bothered with. I thought it might give me like snow-capped mountains or something like that, but I'm gonna have to do that with my, um, oh, how do we do this? That's <laughs> these. These old style ones, I just never could quite get the hang of these these old style ones. So what we're going to do is we're going to get out our darkest gray. I do have a black stamp pad, but I'm not too sure about it. So I'm going to get out my darkest of grays. So that was Smoky Flake. So we're getting out... Um, Well, that's very interesting. I had it out, didn't I? I did have it out. Yes, I did. Okay, well, what I think I'll do is I'll use my memento. So we want these mountains to be fairly detailed. So let's get out the memento. Oh, <laughs> you have to take off the plastic bit, people. <laughs> It doesn't work all that well with the plastic left on. Okay, so I'm just giving that a nice inking. Let's get our gray here, our gray mountain ranges. Now, here's the thing when I did it this way, and when I do it this way, they are opposite. You need to know that, right? But they still fit. You just have to scooch them down a little bit. 
Like if I just lay this down on top of the stamp I've done, it's not right. You just have to move it down, which is what I'm doing right now. And then you can go back and add more if you need to, or you may decide just to cut it the way it is. So there, you see my mountain range? So now what I can do is these two are going to meet better here. So I can go back in there with a little bit to the edge here. See this edge that doesn't have any ink on it? I can go back to there and just give it some ink. Okay, and that's not going to make a darn bit of difference to anything once we cut it out. Okay, same thing on the next one up. There is a little trick to using these, but you know, they're, they're very successful and they do give you some nice mountain ranges and you can always trim off what's not working for you. Give that a really good push. Okay, see that? So I don't think I'm even gonna use the entire thing. So let's, um, let's get our die pieces and see how we go with those. I'm just gonna cut this in half and I can use the little cutter for this. So, or the, little, the little embossing machine is what I really meant to say. So here we have it. And we'll get out our mountain die. Right. Now I'm going to tape these down with washi tape just because I'll feel better about it. <laughs> And these dies fit on the way of the right side of the dies or the, or the um, detailed side of the dies, okay? So you don't have to fuss with those. You have to fuss a little bit with the inking, but you don't have to fuss it at all. Oh, not scary at all, Kim. If you want to, you can, you know, you can buzz me and I can always go online with you if you, if you want some some uh, guidance I can I can do that I'm home most days uh, and if I'm not at home well I'm just going to tell you I'm not so here we go let's get my my uh, mountain range taped all right let's just line that up the best we can a couple of pieces of tape And another one, although I think I'm going to cut that off, that edge there. But we'll see. We're either going to cut it off or we're going to hide it, one or the other. So let's pop that in there, remembering to give it a bit of a staggered effect as you put the plates in so they're not all lined up against each other. It's just easier to, to work the machine if you do that. Thank you, Kimmy. Thank you, Kimmy. Well, I don't really know anyone up here yet, and um, if you know me, you know you know I'm not in any hurry to start collecting friends. It's just not my not my thing. I'm pretty happy here with just my husband and myself, and and uh, we keep ourselves pretty darn busy. So I'm going to cut this down a little bit, okay? I like I like how most of the mountains look. It's just this one here where I had to do a little bit of extra. Uh, stamping to get it to work properly. So I'm just going to cut that down and then I'm going to take off a little bit of this white that I'm seeing that I'm not overly fond of. I don't mind a little bit of the, of the cardstock. Like I don't really cut it right off. I just don't like a lot showing. So I'm just going to tidy this up really. Okay, there's one mountain scene or mountain uh, range. Mountain range, that's what I was looking for. See, someone said, why don't I reuse my washing tape? And I'll tell you, my washi tape, 
I'll tell you why. Whenever I take it off, it rips. Even if I take it off really slowly, it still seems to rip. So maybe I'm just using crappy washi tape. I don't really know. But, all right, so this one here, just going to do the same thing. Wait till you see the trees that come with this set. Well, I did show you one inside the card there. They are beautiful trees. Like this, this set's worth having just to have trees for other things. Like I have a stamp set that I'm really looking forward to using. And it's, it's a camping themed stamp set. It's called Campology. And it's, it's full of beautiful trees as well. And, and when I buy my, my sets, my stamp sets, my die sets, whatever, I'm always thinking beyond just the stamp set that there is. Like I'm attracted to things that have beautiful trees. I'm attracted to things that have birds, you know, like I might not only use the bird with that stamp set. I might use it with, you know, 10 other things that I'm doing. Oh, this one doesn't want to go in, so let's stagger it a little more. I guess I didn't stagger it enough. Okay, this seriously doesn't want to go in. What's different? What have I done differently? Nothing. Bizarreo. Okay. Okay, now it's frustrating me. There is absolutely no difference with what I did before and what I'm doing now, but I can't get it to roll in. Let's just flip that over, see if that'll help at all. That might help. Okay, too annoying. Don't know why. Sometimes it's just a weird thing, right? So I'm going to have to pull out the big one. Okay, now we got the big sucker out there. So let's see what we can do here. I wish I could just pop in the the um, ones that I was already taped to, but I can't because it, they don't, uh, they're not the same height, so it doesn't work by using the smaller plates. So now we got the big one out. I think we'll just keep it handy. We don't need to cut any paper, so I can take that off, and we'll just keep the big one handy. Yes. Yeah, I love I love birds, Kim. I'm I'm all about stamp sets that have birds and trees because you know they're I really like scenery cards. And um, okay, so there we go. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna trim off a little bit of this uh, a little bit of this mount side because it, it didn't get the the gray ink behind it, and then a little bit of the gray down below. Nothing too intense. Not quite like fussy cutting, but. You know, just a little bit. There we go. So now I have two mountain scenes. So let's see how they're going to look. So I kind of want to stagger them like that. It's kind of the plan so that you can see the ones behind. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to get dimensionals. I really want to do dimensionals because I want this card to be very um, 3D-ish. So we're going to get some dimensionals. And I pretty much think that one per mountain peak will do it for here because we're going to put stuff on top of it. There we go. So let's start with that one. And we're meant to have this little bit of shadow gray mountain behind it show it's not meant to be have anything placed on top of it exactly it's supposed to show and just be a little bit of a shadow like so okay i will need to cut that little tiny bit off of there and now i'm going to do this one and what i have to do on this one is let's decide where i want to put it first and then i'm going to put two dimensionals here and a double dimensional over here because if I put it on top of a dimensional, by the time it gets over to this side of the card, it's going to be too flat. And it's not going to look very good. It's not going to look very good. So let's do a couple of those. 
here and here and then let's double up over here I love dimensionals too I use so many <laughs> I'm kind of like I'm a little bit dimensional crazy so it's like every single order there's always like three or four packs of dimensionals whether I need them or not really I just I order them because I, I don't ever want to be out of them so you see what we've got here we've got two that are the standard um, height which will sit on top of the mounts that already have one dimension on it so that'll be like a double dimensional so I have to put a double dimension dimensional over here for the card to sit the card stop to sit properly so here's another little mountain range here I could pop it down a little bit more I could do that that looks kind of neat yeah I'm gonna do that and guess what okay a little bit tricky don't need that one at all my double dimensional didn't need it at all because I'm not using the whole thing what I do need is another dimensional on the one that I only singled in the middle better okay there you have it okay so now what we want to do is let's look at some trees so we're done with our mountains I can go clean those off after I do suggest these ones that are smooth on one side and very detailed on the top it's, it's great to use your, your chamois and sort of clean them off, but I really like to take them to the sink and give them a really good wash. Or you can use, these have come back. Oh, Kim, I wanted to show you this. These were out for a long time and then they were discontinued. And what it is, is it's a two-sided thing to clean your stamps on, okay? So you just take your stamps like this and you rub. And this side i've actually put a sticker on i only do stays on on this side because it's a different kind of ink i use stays on cleaner and i do my stays on on this side and then i use stamp cleaner and conditioner and i do that on this side especially the red rubber stamps really love the conditioner it just makes them last longer they get cleaner but this was discontinued for a long time and i noticed the new catalogs come out and i've already ordered them to send them to both of you but the new catalogs come out and this is back in it it's a really good thing to have especially for con conditioning your stamps you know because um, you want to keep your stamps in good shape in as best a shape as you can manage to keep them in all right so now we're going to do some trees and what i'm going to use is this or is that going to be my card base i think this might be my card base so i'll just put it right there so i'm just going to use a scrap of um of um, mossy meadow mossy meadow is one of my favorite colors it's not actually in the, the color lineup for this card set or for this paper set but I, I prefer it over the one that is which is old olive I kind of like the mossy meadow better so now we're going to take the stamp that stamps the row of trees and we're going to put these fairly low down on the paper and I'll tell you why in a minute. We're going to do the smooth side first. I think I might want a longer piece of paper. Let's see. Yeah, I do. I want a longer piece of paper. So we're going to do the smooth side first. Now let me think about this for a second. Yeah. We're going to do the smooth side first and we're going to stamp it in mossy meadow which is color on color but it works it looks quite good so let's get this well inked up like lots of ink on it oh stop moving stop moving on me And we're going to put it fairly close to the bottom and you'll see why in a minute give that a good hard push and it doesn't have a lot of color detail but it will in a minute or two when you see what i do on the other side so now i'm putting the detailed side on 
and I'm going to use Evening Evergreen. And all I got from this was a bit of a shadow. And that's all I was looking for from the Mossy Meadow. All I was looking for was a bit of a shadow. So now, without cleaning my stamp, I haven't cleaned off the Mossy Meadow. Without cleaning my stamp, uh, uh, Karen, I can tell you. Well, I will tell you. I don't know. I'll have to look. And I can't tell you at this moment because I don't have the catalog in front of me right now with what I'm doing here. So I can't tell you this moment. And I'll have to make sure I'm not violating anything. But, uh... Do you mean the gun itself? The heat embossing gun, Karen? Because I don't think anything disappeared from the tools page. Okay, so we're going to put this on here. We're kind of aiming for, you know, relatively where I made that shadow. If it's the gun, I'm pretty sure it's in there because, um, or the, 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 the embossing, the embossing, um, heater. See, look at that. So what I've got, because I did the mossy metal first, is I've got my trees in a dark outline, but I've also got some shadowing in behind. And I also have some color down here where this sort of debris area, for lack of a better word, but debris area is, okay? So let's get this, let's get this. Uh, now the reason I did it low on the bottom is that this is the die cut for these trees, right? So what you could do is you could have your trees up here, cut it, and then this portion down here would also be part of your card. But that's not what I'm doing today. So. Uh, I just want to be able to cut these. Yeah, as far as, I, I'm pretty sure the heat tools, the heat uh, tool is still there. And I can tell you what, there are some embossing powders, um, but right off the top of my head, um, I don't, I don't remember what there is. I just don't think there was anything eliminated from the um the heat tool or from the tools page so that pretty much has to be there okay so let's give this a cut i haven't left here i'm just over here using the the big guy. So this is what you get when you use this this die cut. You're actually going to have all the tops of the trees cut, but it's not cut at the bottom. Okay, so you're meant to decide how much ground you want showing. I'm just going to trim this off. So you're meant to decide on your own, how much ground do I want showing? And, you know, so there's my piece there. Now I'm going to trim this off because I don't want any of this blank space here. Okay, so let's have a look at our card. I'm just deciding where I want everything to go. Yeah, I'm going to make another one of these. So one on the on the black blank side on with mossy meadow, and then the other one with. I don't know why that thing is. My case is moving so much, it's just annoying. So let's make another one of those. For my shadow, that's a good one. We'll pop it right back over again. And like I said, I'm not cleaning off my mossy meadow that I, uh, that I had on there from before. I'm leaving it. All right. Get this out of the way. Okay. 
and yeah so I'm gonna do this and give it a good push down there we go now Do the same thing and then we got to start doing some trimming because this six by six is larger than my card is so i want to know where i want that to be to um, trim it right where i want the, the seam to be built Yeah, I'm sure none of that stuff went. I don't think all the heat embossing powders are are in still, but I know it's you know it's not like there aren't any. They're just uh, they come out seasonally sort of thing. They'll probably come out. The Christmas catalog will be in. Uh, it, that'll come out in June. There'll be a mini catalog which will come out in June, and then that will probably have some more colored embossing powders in it. I'm not saying for sure. I'm just going on you know, experience, that it, it occurs to me that we do get some more interesting embossing powders when the Christmas stuff comes out, right? I'm just waiting for a package. I feel like it should have arrived already, but it's, uh, I signed up for Stampin' Up! on tour to learn all about the new catalog and stuff, and with that you get a free stamp set, so I'm dying to know what that's going to be, and then I can show you and do a do a demo. I can only, right now, I can only show you the front of the catalog and nothing more than that. But when I get my, um, when I get my catalog, I'll, I'll put up the front of it so you can at least see what the, what the front is going to be like, because it's pretty nice. It's a pretty nice calendar. So let's just trim this off appropriately. I'm just going to go around where I make, it's part of the reason too, for making that shadow stamp. You want to give this bottom part a little bit of the shadowing so i'm just gonna fussy cut it off where the shadowing is right along the line of it okay okay so now here's what we're going to do we're going to figure out where we want to cut this off i'm going to use my guillotine cutter because it will be more successful. I think we're going to cut off a little bit off this side. Uh, we're going to cut off some of this side. Just because I feel like I don't need quite that much. Okay, so let's get, let's be smart about this. Get my ruler that's always sitting right there but isn't right now. Okay, well that's handy, handy dandy. Isn't that funny? Okay, well, I can tell by here that it's five and we want five and a quarter. So let's take it off at, uh, four and a quarter. So let's take it off at like four and three quarters to start with and see what we get. Okay, yes, I kind of like that. And then let's see what, if we want to take off that much on this side, let's see what this is going to look like. So four and a quarter. Yeah, I think that's okay. Four and a quarter is going to be okay. Yes, I rather like that. Okay, so there we have it. There we have it. That's our little basis of our card. Oh, I'm liking that. And then in front of the mountains, these are meant to go. So let's let's get them and let's. So I'm only gonna I'm gonna put dimensionals just along the bottom row here, not not along the whole thing because I don't quite know where it's gonna sit yet. So let's get my dimensionals. I'm just going to put them along the bottom like this. 
so that I can then figure out exactly where I want things to be. I know I do a lot of stuff kind of arse backwards, but it, it works for me. So are you, yeah, it's, it's just the mail right now is insane. It's, it's really, really crazy. In fact, they said that the, the company will mail out catalogs to our, our customers. And I almost signed up for that. But then I found out that if the company does it, they'll take a lot longer. So I'm just going to do it myself. I've ordered the catalogs and I will just do it myself and send them to you. So let's go in and trim this. Yeah, I'm trimming a little bit of a dimensional off because I, I didn't think of, but that's okay. Just a little bit. Not worried about it at all. Okay, so we'll take off our dimensional stickers or backings. Let's see how things look. Liking that. And then along the bottom of this one, we're going to do double dimensionals, okay? We're back to double dimensionals so that they can still go where we want them to go. So let's get some of those. I knew I did that. Forgot to take off the the paper part. Okay. There we go. Oh, come on. That one doesn't really come off at all. Like not at all. Silly. Let's see if I can poke it off. Nope, I can't. So that's a loss. It just didn't want to let go for some reason. I have no idea why. That one came off and this one. No hexagons everywhere in my house. Like, I mean everywhere. I found a hexagon in the fridge. I have no idea. Like, what is going on? So there, we kind of have two rows of trees and land. And then we've got our, we've got our little um, water scene there. And then we have just a little bit more to do. I'm going to get out my guillotine again and there we are full colors this time just on my back tell me if I'm back Okay, good. I can't really tell from where I am. I can see me, but I can't tell if you can see me. And there's another tree. So these ones need a really good hard press. Yes, I could use my stamparatus, but that just wasn't my plan today. So these trees are really, really pretty. And I can do both die cuts at the same time. There's one here. And one here. So let's just pop those on. Get the ink out of the way. And 
one set of trees. And two trees. These are pretty brilliant. So these will have to be double dimensionalized, okay? Same thing. I was going to do two there. Yeah, it, it's nice. I like I like clumps of trees. I'm all about clumps of trees. And I do like anything that I can do more than one at one time in the die cutting machine. I don't know if I want to have it over or just make that a clump of trees. I think I'm just going to make that a clump of trees. Then we're going to get ourselves a little bird. No, we're going to get the birds. For, there is a bird in here, so if you just have this set, there's birds here too. But I thought, since I, um, since I have a fair sized bit of sky there, I would use the birds out of the On the Horizon stamp because they're, um, they're larger. And there's more of them at one time, so it's just kind of a single stamping. And, uh, and there you have it. So, all right, let's do this. All right, let's do this little puppy and see how she looks. Make sure you got them right side up. And there they are, little birds. Oh, guess what I did? Oh. Well, that was very clever of me. Hang on a minute. Did you see what I did? I put my trees on before I um, cut my cardstock down, or my, my design down to fit on the card, right? That's okay. No harm. No harm. So this one has to be... There's my card. So this will need to be five and a half. And I, oh, right there in front of me, five and a half I need there. And I don't have five and a half on that one. I'm gonna use the other one. There we go. So this is the size of the front of my cardstock. I didn't feel like having a, a trim around it. So let me just put my little trees back on. I lost the dimensional there. Oh, 
Oh, there it is. I hear I have some sitting there handy. Let's put another one back on because it, it peeled it off when I took the card off. And let's try that again, shall we? There you go, and there you go. So that's kind of interesting looking, isn't it? You know, I wished, I kind of wished I could have put one of those big spindly trees on, these ones with the, with this die cut, but the bottom line is there's nowhere for you to put a dimensional, nowhere. So it's got, to, these trees can really only be used where they're flat against the, uh, against the card. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do, um, the good old, well, let's see, let's see what this is. Yeah, I'm going to do twine again. I love my twine. I'm going to do twine again because it's rustic and, you know, I just think it looks really good. And it's really curly because it's getting towards the end of the thing. So I got curly, curly. What do you mean the dimensionals? Oh, you do it to do a double dimensional. You put one dimensional down, peel off the piece of protective stuff, put the other one down on top of them so they'll stick tight together and then peel that off as well. OK, so you have um, so they're all so everything's all stuck together. which is kind of important. Oh my goodness, this stuff is so curly, it's ridiculous. All right, so let's refine that bow just a little bit. Oh, make it just a little bit smaller. And then I'm kind of going to put that, I'm just going to move this over because I kind of want it to be in the trees. I kind of want the bow to be sort of in the trees, right? And it's a double bow, so it's very loopy. And then I thought I would like to have something uh, sort of basic, not too, not too, too much. I was thinking of something like this in um, in what stamp could I use on there? What could I use? Um, what's in this one again? Gosh, I don't even see anything that would work well with this. I'm going to put this on my card base. I'm not going to pop it up, obviously. We have already got quite enough height in this card. So for something completely different, I never do this, but I actually am going to put the tape right on my card base because I already know my card's going to go all the way around it and that way it'll just be easier for me to plop the card down than to try and put tape on the back side of this card. So let's just do that. Take my little card front. Yep. Now let's see how it, remember last time I did the little bits of snow capping? Let's see how that would look on these ones. That looks pretty neat. Okay, I'm going to do the snow capping. This is the stamp and Chalk marker. I hate to tell you that I think it's been discontinued. But I'm just going to give these mountain peaks a little, a little 
still popping. Yeah, that looks kind of neat. We'll just run it up one side consistently on each mountain because the sun would actually be, the snow would actually be heavier on one side of that than the other. Can you see that? How it's got a little bit of snow topped mountains? Just a bit. And then my thought process was to do the uh, a circle punch and put a sentiment on it. But I think that the circle, I don't know that I have anything I can put on a circle punch. Isn't that silly? Mm. Well, I think happy birthday or a spring chicken wouldn't be the best thing to put on it. How about, how about this? This is from Honey Bee Home. Let's see what it looks like. Let's get a piece of white and punch ourselves a little circle. And let's see what this would look like in the um, evening evergreen. And we'll give it a Best of luck or stay wonderful? Let's see. Maybe best of luck would suit the... Yeah, I think best of luck is going to suit the shape of the circle the best. So we'll do best of luck from... Oh. You know, is it just me? Everything I touch seems to go on the floor before I actually get to use it. I don't know. I don't think it's just me because I think I hear other people saying the same thing. Give that a good, and I'm going to try and center this the best that I can. It's a really nice font, too. Oh, yeah, that's pretty, right? That's quite pretty. Now, I think I'm going to do my dauber thing, because you know I don't like those stark white edges. So I'm going to get out a dauber and just give this a little bit around the edges. Nothing much, nothing much, just a little bit. And we'll find some nice jewels to this one. Okay. Just a little tiny sentiment, but I think it works. Uh, I think it would be better if I do this. So just bear with me. I'm just going to do this one little cut. I just cleaned them with water, Kim. Like all of our stuff, all of our stuff, the ink is water soluble. So that's all I do. I just clean them with water. And the daubers and the brushes, I have a tendency to put them in the sink and soak them. Okay? Like rather than try and rub them or anything like that. Just put them in the sink, soak them for a little bit. And um, they'll come pretty clean. There'll be remnants of what colors you you have. And the daubers come in packages. So I think you get four or five in the dauber. And then you can just designate them to your lighter colors, your darker colors, and, and whatnot. So things will look... Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to like this better. I trimmed down my circle. Yeah. I like it better. I used a, tip, a stitched... Uh, a stitch circle. I took it down a notch. So then we'll get our dimensionals. And we'll put one at the top and one at the bottom so it'll straddle that uh, 
point. And I'm not going to color around it. I'm not going to put any dauber around it because it's a nice stitched edge right now. And I rather like it. There we go. There we go. So let's put something on here. Um, I'm sort of leaning toward the polished dots just because they have a lot of character. Um, no, that's not what I was leaning towards at all. It's the... Um, here they are. I think those look nice. The darker ones. I think those will look really nice on here. Uh, these are called the brush metallic dots. So I'm going to put a couple in here. Let's find our pick tool. I think I'll do a little tiny up there. Maybe another little tiny over there. Okay. So there we go. So I will put something inside. I always do, but uh, I'm going to head off now and watch some watch some Netflix with my husband. And uh, we both had a hard day at the gravel pit. <laughs> Seriously, we have. We're getting gravel today, so it's a hard day at the gravel pit. I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, uh, tomorrow I'm thinking of doing something that's really, really fun. It's called a never-ending card. And it's one of those projects. I love this in my quilting. I love doing things that look... Oh, thank you, guys. I love doing things that look really difficult but are actually super-duper simple. That's that's a thing for me. That's I like to do that. So I have a, a neat thing. It's called a never-ending card, and it's just great for any occasion. You can make it for kids. You can make it for men. You can, you know, it's just a fun, fun, fun thing to do. So I think we'll have that tomorrow, and uh, I'll just go as we go and see what paper I want to use with it, and we'll just have a fun time. All right. So hop on over to my Facebook page or my uh, my my Instagram page. There's a few interesting things going on there. And I will be here tomorrow at 4 o'clock. And I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks so much for, for coming to see me. Thanks, thanks very much for being here. All right. Bye for now.